Good morning, you guys. Welcome back to Starkey Farmstead. So I've got a quick question for you. How much are you spending on Christmas? That's a lot, friend. That's a lot. This may be a very unpopular video, but I feel like I need to say it for you, for everyone else. You don't have to spend anything. Let me say that one more time. Hey, you don't have to spend anything. In fact, Izzy, you think that Christmas has become not about Jesus and more about consumerism? Let me tell you what you can do. This Christmas, you can actually wait until the day after Christmas, purchase everything at 50 and 75% off, and have your Christmas the weekend after Christmas. Because we're celebrating a day that's supposed to be about the birth of Jesus. But we don't really know when Jesus' birthday is. And the one thing Jesus was, if he was anything, was he was frugal. And he would not want you, <clears throat> excuse me, he would not want you worried about how you're going to afford Christmas. And since Jesus is God, and he talks about owing no man anything, he definitely would not want you using a credit card. Now, this is a debit card, but he would not want you using a credit card to fund Christmas. Now, I know that all of your life, especially us us people born in the 50s and the 60s and 70s and the 80s, things didn't cost as much. Our parents, there was still an upper middle class in the United States, and it was not uncommon for all of us to get hundreds, if not thousands of dollars of Christmas presents on Christmas morning. And that would be an entire room. I know, go back to your childhood. That's what I'm doing right now. And in my mind, I remember walking into a room that literally had Christmas presents that would extend seven feet from underneath the tree out in a semicircle, right? I mean, like the entire quarter of the room, and we had big houses in the 70s and 80s, was presents. You take that same amount of money that our parents spent then, and you spend it now, you'll be lucky to get eight quality presents for your children or grandchildren or godchildren. You guys, I know that the world tells us that we are bad people if we don't spoil our families on December 25th. But it doesn't have to be that way. If you actually want to have an old-timey Christmas, then do it in a way that you are using the creative brain that God your Father gave you and honor Him by not putting your family in debt for a holiday to celebrate a risen Savior that rose from the dead to set you free. He rose from the dead to set you free so that you could put yourself in debt with a credit card or a loan from a bank, a Christmas loan from a bank, guys, it isn't all that. If Christmas means that much to you, if you have school age children between like, you know, third grade and 12th grade where it matters what they get and your kids, unfortunately, are in still in public school and I'm not judging, I'm just saying they're still in public school, so they're going to have to go show off what you bought them. Do your Christmas on the 26th or the 27th. Wait till everything goes on sale on the 26th. Take those same children and let them really buy what they really want. Not a knockoff gift or not a gift 
that you got that was made in China, which maybe it would be a lot better of a gift if it was made in America. Um, you know, I'm just saying, play with it. I'm not telling you have to do this. Don't get upset. Trying to help release you. Because I really am maybe one of the few people in America that simply, if I don't have cash in hand, I don't buy it. And I don't buy for everyone. I used to feel funny because people would be like, Carl, I got you a gift for Christmas. I'm like, really? Like, I mean, to be a friend of mine, you probably heard me say I don't have a lot of besties. My best friends are women that I see every day that we share our lives together. Like Miss Florence, Miss Charlene. We're not the same color. <laughs> We're not the same age. But we live in the same town. And we love each other. Not only as sisters in Christ, but friends. We can be really honest with each other, which I find refreshing. Like, y'all, like real honesty. Not, I have to worry about that when I say something, they're going to leave my home and go call everybody else on the, the PTO call list. Like, they're not about telling my business. Other than that, I have church friends and I have family. And then I have farm friends who I love with all of my heart. But our gifts to each other are like, girl, I got you a pack of heirloom seeds. What? It's, it's stuff like it's plants. So, you know, a bag of worm castings that I know that they've wanted all year. But $60 or $75, depending on the size of the bag, is a lot of money to spend right now. So, I'll put a couple of bags of worm castings together. I'll make a few phone calls. Hey, if you come right over, I got something for you, girl. We have a cup of coffee. I give them the worm castings. No strings attached. Just something I have that they would cherish. See what I'm saying? You are probably at a stage in your life where you're already in your head stressing about the amount of parties, events, and presents you're going to be required to purchase this year. Moms, grandmothers, fathers. I was a public school teacher for many years. I can only remember like five gifts that I got out of seven public school Christmases, all right? Seven Christmases I taught in public schools, I can remember five gifts. All told, I have probably taught upwards of 600 public school students. I remember five gifts. I don't remember the ones who didn't bring me a gift. You would think maybe I would, but I don't. I do remember and still have the gifts where parents brought me a picture of their child in a homemade Christmas ornament. I still have those because they touched my heart. Make sure you write on the back your child's first, middle, and last name and their birth date, okay? That helps me, if I ever want to look for them on social media, be able to find your child later in life. So if you're going to do that for your teacher, that is just a free tip, okay? You don't have to go crazy. I give out jams and jellies to my family. Now... Most of the people in my family are well-to-do, and they buy anything that they want. They don't need me to go spend my very hard-earned earned $40 on a gift that they could just go get. They do find it hilarious when they open up their gifts, and it's like a family type of gift for them, them and their children. You know, like, I am the aunt and the great aunt that's known for passing out a set of water guns in a bag so that everybody has their own water gun. I am the aunt that's going to give you organic produce and jams when I know that you're pregnant because I don't want my great niece or nephew to come out with autism. I, I'm that aunt. So I don't know who, what position you're playing in your family, but I can tell you this. The stress that you're feeling right now isn't fair to you. And it isn't fair to Jesus. That is what he died on the cross for. People complain about Christmas, but we're the problem. I mean, seriously, have you guys seen 
the fact that it's before Thanksgiving and they're already doing Black Friday. What's up with that? Have y'all seen the lack of shopping? Everyone that I know right now is bat battening down the hatches, okay? Like, we feel it in the air. Do I think anything's really going to pop off in 2024? Mm-mm. I think a few small things are going to pop off. At the time, they're going to feel big. But when the real things pop off, we're going to realize that 2024 was just like the tremors before the earthquake. But I am going to tell you guys, if you're going to be sending gifts to people that you love, send them something that's really going to help them. So I was thinking, I've got four young adult biological children. I've got a young adult adopted child living with us. And I've got godchildren everywhere of, of all ages. What will I get them for Christmas? Well, the child living with me, I will buy a couple of things that I think that he really wants. And I'll wrap them and put them under the tiny tree in my living room. My godchildren, they will get me. I will make sure to go pick them up and roast marshmallows and have hot chocolate and watch Christmas movies in our pajamas and eat popcorn and I will love on them and I will create Christmas memories that they may have never had before. I'm not saying they have it. I'm just saying they may never have had the same Christmas memories as me and I would like to give them that because they will remember that. They will remember that. They won't remember what I got them for Christmas. So I won't spend any money on Christmas. I never have. I will give my best friend some money to help her pay for their Christmas. Because it isn't about whose name's on that gift. It's about the fact that they got something. Now, most of us watching this, we our kids are not going to lack. Our children are not going to lack. Grandchildren are not going to lack. But there's a family near you that is. They are going to lack. And you literally, you and your family could change that child's memories by giving them an actual Christmas to remember. <clears throat> so I am the head of Adopt a Family at our church this year. And I, our pastor was like, who's going to take over this? I was like, I'll do it. Me, me, pick me, pick me. You know, like a little kid. And so we had a family recently that had a newborn baby that passed away at five days of age. Now they go to our church, so we don't really need to adopt them, but they're in deep mourning of the loss of a newborn child. So my idea is to do it all. Purchase a Christmas tree and all the decorations, all of the stockings, all of the gifts and deliver a fully cooked, hot, southern Christmas morning, Christmas meal to them Christmas Eve. Now, I would like your suggestions. I'm thinking that the week after Thanksgiving, we need to bring the tree, the stockings, and all the decorations to them then. And then show up Christmas Eve morning with the fully cooked meal and all of the wrapped presents and the stocking stuffers. So let me know what you think about that. I would love some suggestions because I know all of you have huge giving hearts. Like I read your comments and I know which ones of you who are genuinely givers, right? So I would like your ideas and your input and your knowledge. First time I've ever done this. So, I mean, I guess I could do it wrong, but it is what it is. But my point is this, I'm releasing you from feeling guilty. If you feel the need that you must have a family Christmas party, do it after Christmas. Why does everybody want to have one family party after another before Christmas? There's a week between Christmas and New Year's that everything in the entire world will be 50 to 75% off. Food and all. Do your Christmas parties then. You can thank me after the new year, after you literally save $2,000, and don't have interest to pay. Because I care that you guys get out of debt. It isn't about money. It's about Jesus. 
be the first one in your family to make memories and not debt for Christmas. I love you guys. God bless you. Please like, comment, and subscribe.